rage and anger in Tonawanda tonight. Residents there, many who claim to be sick from the air quality, directing their frustration at one local company, Tonawanda Coke. Now, it's time to come clean. I'm Erin Heaney, and I'm the director of the Clean Air Coalition, and this is our story. Well, they gather today at a town of Tonawanda playground. But protesters aren't playing around. What do we want? Clean air! What do we want? Now! It started about six years ago. Um, Jackie James Creedon, the organization's founder, was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And she believed that it had to do with the environment that she was living in. So she began knocking doors, talking to other people in the community about what they were experiencing. And she found the more doors she knocked, the more sick people she found. And it wasn't just fibromyalgia, it was cancer, it was respiratory diseases, it was asthma. A lot of people are sick in the area. Um, I just um, finished um, cancer treatment at Roswell. There's no way I should be alive. Everybody I've ever known all my life is dead. And so Jackie teamed up with some other folks and decided to do their own testing. They took the bucket, it's a homemade air monitoring device, we took air samples, sent them off to the DEC and asked them to further investigate the problem. And the samples came back from the very beginning with really high levels of benzene. It also showed that the predominant uh, source of benzene was Tonawanda Coke. And once we saw that the finger had been pointed at Tonawanda Coke, we wanted to engage the largest polluter first. The next phase was a very deliberate decision to run a good neighbor campaign. And that was to approach J.D. Crane, the owner of Tonawanda Coke, and ask him to meet with the community. He said, uh, thanks but no thanks. We've invited J.D. Crane of Tonawanda Coke to, uh, to meet with us three times and three times we've been rejected. He's not going to come to us so we're going to, going to come to him today. We're going to be railing outside the, the gates of Tonawanda Coke. It was mostly community members. We had our allies from UB, we had elected officials there. They came together and uh, shared their stories on the microphone. <laughs> Folks were there demanding a solution. The big concern with tar sludge is that it is cancer causing. The residents are trying to get the EPA involved since they have not heard from the plant's officials about a remedy. We only had to do it once <laughs> um, in order to get a lot more media coverage and that played a really important role. Um, in educating more people. You know, the more people saw it on the news, the more people started coming to our meetings. It also gained the support of many elected officials who saw that their constituents were starting to get upset about the fact that there was no action being taken. The week after, Jackie and I went to Albany to meet with some of the higher up folks in the regulatory agencies. The new town of Coke was breaking the law and we needed them to step in. We didn't come away with too much that was really concrete. There was definitely a waiting period and there was a lot of anxiety and we didn't really know what our next move was. Topping on witness news, federal agents raiding a local coke plant, a plant that nearby residents have said for years now has been making them all sick. And right before Christmas, Tonawan Coke was raided with a federal search warrant. The EPA, the DDC, the Coast Guard, and the U.S. Attorney General's office raided the plant. Those agents storming the facility early Thursday morning, seizing samples and paperwork. Some Tonawanda residents and community activists cheering it as a major step forward to clean up the air they breathe. The news kept getting better. So the next week, the environmental control manager at the plant was arrested. So he's let out of the plant in cuffs. We begin tonight with breaking news. A top manager at a Tonawanda plant accused of poisoning the air has been arrested. Mark Kamholtz from Tonawanda Coke was brought into federal court today, facing a long list of environmental violations. The news kept getting even better. In January, the EPA issued three notices of violation. They sent one for air, water, and hazardous waste. So we thought this was just an air issue. It wasn't. That's huge. You know, with the arrest, that was good that one individual was being held accountable. The action that the EPA took in January means that the entire plant has to change how it works. Um, and that's what we wanted. Authorities with the U.S. Attorney's Office and the Environmental Protection Agency say that this is one step in what's going to be a long process a major investigation into the plant and the pollution. My hope is that this campaign has shown that we can make progress. Change takes a really long time, it's really hard, and it's not gonna come overnight. By organizing, by showing community power, by telling stories, we can make a change, and it's only gonna happen one company at a time. This is just the beginning, and we can't do it without you. The best way to help is to give us a call or go to our website to find meaningful ways to get involved.